What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another great episode. DJ React, you know what it is. Uh, not doing a bunch of pity, P. Diddy, pity, <laughs> pity him, P. Diddy stuff, uh, today, but we're gonna throw some in there because there are some TikToks that haven't showed what some of the videos I played showed. But, anyways, as a disclaimer, this is for entertainment purposes only. Don't believe anything that I say. Don't believe anything that you see on these videos. This is for entertainment purposes only. Do your own research. On that note, let's get into this content. Shabbat Shalom, Israel and the strangers amongst us. Check this out and stay tuned to the end because I got something to show you like I always do. This Bible from 1813 has something very interesting. It is a fax page that contains a list of people and events in chronological order. It says that from Adam unto Christ are 3,947 years. And from the birth of Christ to this present year is 1814 years. Then the whole sum and number of years from the beginning of the world unto this present year is 5788. It's true. In the year 1814 the world really was 5788 years old. This year, 2022, the earth would be approximately 5998 years old. So that information is amazing all within itself. But here's why it's so significant. And here's the other piece of the puzzle that's going to blow your mind. Paul tells us to remember one thing, that a day to the Lord is equal to a thousand years. Now, remember in the book of Genesis, God says that he created the earth in six days and on the seventh day, he rested, right? Here's a writing from Barnabas, an early church father and the disciple of Paul that we read about in the New Testament. He says this, give he children. What does this mean? He ended in six days. He means this, that in 6,000 years, the Lord shall bring things to an end. For a day with him signifies a thousand years. And this he himself bears witness, saying, behold, the day of the Lord shall be as a thousand years. Therefore, children, in six days, that is in 6,000 years, everything shall come to an end. If you go on to read, Barnabas says that at this time, Jesus will abolish lawlessness and wickedness off the face of the earth. And he says that he's going to do Go check that brother's page. That was something I actually saw when I was in the Soviet Union as a child in a... Uh, and I was going to the uh, Christian Orthodox Church in Russia. Uh, I didn't. I didn't see that specific thing, but yeah, I saw all of the people in the Bible were black, and it was old as hell. While you was distracted last week about that social media ban, let me show you what was really going on, because they know if you could get your hands on this information here, you're a tam. Russia has opened its cellars to reveal remarkable paintings of Jesus dating back to the 1400s. Have you ever seen or heard of biblical icons where Jesus or the Virgin Mary have dark skin? Or even Abraham or King David? Then look beyond Europe. Russia has opened its vaults to reveal biblical icons featuring darker skinned figures. In case this is making you wonder if Russia has its own twist on biblical figures. The answer is a no. This is not the case at all. This is, a matter of fact, as real as the untouched horizon of time. These icons aren't just artistic anomalies. These hold deep meanings of hidden shaded truths, sparking serious curious questions about history and faith, representation and the unexpected corners of religious art. Pay close attention, amazing people. You are just about to hear it today, like it is, in this video. In the Bible that the Americans turned white when they told the stories to us. But Russians didn't get the memo, they went off for real history. Songs of Solomon. USA is also a great deceiver, and so many people inherit the wrong lesson from their great-grandparents and their parents, to the point where it's so deep that the lie is made true when the real answer is really just right there. But you never look, because why San would you- Angelo in Rome is currently hosting an exhibition of 40 Russian icons that have left their country for the first time. They are pieces of art that were hidden after the October Revolution of 1917 in order to protect them from anti-religious destruction. There's been so much debate going on around the world of late, bestirred by the unveiling of these black biblical icons. Some tend to think that the icons had blackened over time due to age, 
While others say that the blackness of the icons has nothing to do with age but are a measure of accuracy meant to depict the actual color of the skins of the people painted. So the reason that it, it's not it's not the actual image turning black is it's because if that were the case the entire image would be like that not just the skin and, and this is something that is very simple to come to you know christ wasn't european uh jews and semitic peoples are from africa north africa the, those whole areas what do you expect them to look like it's common sense but when uh when da vinci was having his little uh you know male to male relationship with uh cesar borgia's son he ordered all of all of the visages of christ be painted to show his son's face so when you have i have one in my living room that uh that my mother left behind when you look at that picture, that's not Christ. That's uh, that's a Borgia. That's Cesar Borgia's son. Cesar Borgia was one of the popes. His son, you know, had a had a relationship with Da Vinci, and so that's how his face got put on everything and to look very European. Why else would all of these things look very European when they're not anywhere near European? It's pretty common sense, but it's just, it's kind of, for some people, it's going to blow their mind, but it's, it's just common sense. Look where they're from, you know? This is the most mind-blowing and weird machine that humans ever created, the quantum computer. Google's quantum computer, Sycamore, recently completed a calculation within just a few seconds. The same calculation would take the most powerful supercomputer today 47 years to complete. But a quantum computer is fundamentally different from classical computers. They operate on principles of quantum mechanics that are unlike anything we're used to in our daily lives. One of the key features that makes quantum computers weird is superposition. Unlike classical bits that can only be in a state of zero or one at any given time, quantum bits or qubits can exist in a superposition that's kind of a non-binary fluid state. Unlike a classical computer which tries every path one after another, the quantum computer tries all paths simultaneously to find the answer. But they can only operate at temperatures just above absolute zero, which is basically the vacuum of space. For me, being in the field that I'm in, which is, you know, IT engineering, that is one of the most spectacular, but also one of the most terrifying things that we've ever built. Because for one, and, and if you don't understand computers speak in ones and zeros, it's called binary. So, uh, you know, zero, you're off, one, you're on quantum computer can be both at the same time now the reason this is scary is because they've already been doing predictions from these quantum computers and the crazy thing is if you've ever seen one in person i've only ever seen one but when you're near it it's sitting in like this big box like a like a giant fridge refrigerator and it sounds like it's breathing you can hear it like inhale and exhale but you know that's probably just the liquid nitrogen or, or whatever but the the crazy thing is they've already been using these to be able to predict things with an astounding amount of accuracy astounding i'm talking they can take history they can load anything into it uh baseball games uh natural disasters uh school bang bangs and you know unalive they can do all of this stuff and it, it will analyze and spit out the answers so accurately that you know when you have something that can do that and then you put it into the hands of the people that love to just weaponize everything instead of using it for good for the good of humanity for the good of this earth then that's that's the part that scares me we could easily use this to 
come up with things that will save the earth, save the rainforest, you know, just do everything right. But they won't do that with that. They're not going to do that. They're going to use it as a weapon like they do everything else. And that's the saddest part in my eyes. You see he was running with his hard hat in his hand? That should definitely be on your head on your head in a situation like that. Okay, like real, real quick couple of questions. What was on the boat? Like what was in those containers? Because it was carrying almost five thousand containers, so like what was what was on on the boat? What was on the boat? Like I haven't done a ton of digging into this specific company, but I guess their owner was like found in their car. So like what was what was on the boat? And it was going to this place, which, yeah, what, <laughs> what was on the boat? What was on the boat? Because it's rumored that this port is like one of the biggest hubs for this type of activity. So like, what was on the boat? And then for this guy to come out and say, what was it that he said? Oh, right. The federal government is going to fund the rebuild. So basically like you and I, taxpayers are going to pay for them to put this building. But that's a shipping giant, which definitely has insurance why aren't they making an insurance claim where they can like do an investigation to figure out what happened to the boat what was on the boat what was on the boat now we're paying for it this way so there doesn't have to be an investigation no 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 we'll just pay for it and everything goes away what was on the boat this is a severe problem in baltimore so what was on the boat i love her passive aggressiveness i want to hear her say what's in the box <laughs> This is why you should never buy glitter again. So the main glitter manufacturer company is called Glitterax. And an investigative journalist went from the New York Times to do an article about it. And there were a lot of like top secret spots in the factory that they couldn't go to. There's a worldwide shortage of glitter. So Chris went to ask like one of the higher ups, like what's going on? Why is there a shortage? Like what's happening? He asked for a real tour of the factory. And the guy said, absolutely not. You cannot come on a real tour. We don't do real tours. And he said that you absolutely cannot see the glitter being made. He even said that you can't go to a room nearby and hear how it's being made. He said that even like the companies that are their main clientele don't have access to these rooms and are not allowed to know exactly how the glitter is being made. But like, it's really suspicious that no one is even allowed to hear it being made. Now the company that is the largest consumer for glitter was asked what it is. And she said, I can't even tell you. And someone asked, they said, if we looked at the product that you use to make glitter, would we know that it turns into glitter? And she said, no, not really. She said, they don't want anyone to know that it is glitter. Do you believe all of this? Let me know and follow my TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube for more. It really helps when you interact. Also, I'm not trying to badmouth anyone. This is just a cool topic we're talking about. I don't know about you all, but now I am going to soak so much energy into finding out what the hell glitter is made out of. And I didn't need that in my life. That's not something I needed to hear today. I got a lot of shit to go that's going on. I work every day. I didn't need this to be in my life, but now I'm going to focus so much energy on what the fuck is in glitter? You can't even hear it being made. And if you saw it, you wouldn't even know that it turns into glitter. What? What the fuck kind of... I never, I never... No, I, I never ever thought that I would be sitting here contemplating what the fuck glitter is made out of. I thought I knew what it was made out of. I thought it was made out of, you know, specific kind of plastics with a specific coating. You know, nothing too complicated, but apparently not. So now we got to find out what the fuck glitter is. So I hope you guys are with me. If you have any info on this, please let me know. Because 
I have no idea what glitter is made of. I've never even pondered the idea of what it's made of, let alone wanting to dig deep into what it's made of and why we can't hear it being made and what's the actual original uh, thing that they use that says we wouldn't even know that turns into glitter. Like, this has just got me all discombobulated, but I need to know what glitter is. Now. Hey, what are you doing there? Hey. Yes. Yes. Why, why are you taking pictures of my car? Um, I'm with the HOA. An yeah. unlicensed car is not allowed to be parked in the driveway. It has to be in the garage. Or right. it could be covered with a uh, car cover. Okay. No, I just wanted and, to and, let you know. And your name is what? Exactly. Eager. And I left you some Charwell information. Correct. And um, so there's some information there. You can go online and find the documents that say that. And then also I need to let you know the cool code because I didn't write it in there. Okay. Cool. I've got the I've got the cool code and, and so the house is owned by Mike Bagwell. He's the yes. one that maintains the HOA, so you can contact Mike. Okay. And uh I you know, appreciate you not creeping around my house. Uh, well, you know, I tried to come and knock on your door. So just yeah. letting you know. And then take a picture of my tag and I will so. not submit the tag number, but I will have to submit the um, expiration. Okay. Well, I, I thought you guys did all that stuff from the curb and weren't um, coming onto people's property. Well, it's pretty obvious that you backed the car in. So. Well, actually, that's how they dropped it off when I asked them to tow it. So. Okay. Um, okay well, do you have a Do you have a job? Yeah, uh, yes, I work from home. Okay. All right. Well, uh, thanks for letting me know. Okay. Thank you. This hits home with me because right now I'm at war with my fucking HOA. And so I've been reading a lot into how to deal with them. I haven't paid my HOA for three years. And there's a good reason behind it. See, when I built this house in 2010... 2010 to 2011 we were promised uh parks for the kids a pool and these little ponds and they did none of that but what they do is they go around like uh my two neighbors like across from me i mean to the left of me and then across the street both two-story houses and during the winter storms, they got like this big, I'd say maybe five foot circumference blemish on the siding on the top of their their houses, like, you know, 25 or so feet up. And in the middle of winter, they're like, you know, you're getting fined for that. You've got to clean that. And then my other, one of my buddies the one with the one of the ones with the stain on his uh on his siding at the top he got fined sixty dollars for leaving his grill it was behind his car or in front of his car like going into the driveway uh parking uh garage is right here he had the grill right here oh you guys can't see my hands so this is the garage he's driving in parks right in front of the garage the gri the grill is right here but they came and gave him a six dollar fine for that and so we were like we didn't get any of the stuff we were promised and all they do is go around you know giving you tickets for shit but they don't give tickets for shit that they should and so uh I found out that you don't have to pay HOA. Now, you can't disband them. You can't do that. That takes a lot. Of, you got to go to court, and that's a long legal practice. But just so some of you know, you do not have to pay them. 
you don't now if you're somewhere where you've got a lot of facilities that you use then great that's that's worth paying but when you're somewhere like where i am where we don't like them uh what i've done is i've gotten about 30 people to stop paying hoa for the past few years and we're now in the process of voting all of them out and putting whoever we want in there because everybody says is just some karens like her going by giving tickets and then you know taking this money and doing whatever with because it's not going to the subdivision and i live in a in a pretty nice subdivision you know it was just built in 2010 2011 my house was the first one built so yeah you don't have to pay them they can't do shit to you if you don't and uh well they can keep you from using the facilities if you have those but that's about it but you can vote them out and so that's what we're in the process of doing we're we're going to vote them all out and then put in who we want to represent us for the hoa and then just be like hey uh we don't need shit from you because you didn't provide shit to us so you know if you see somebody that's got a dent in their garage you know because of an accident don't go find them if you see somebody that's got a stain on the side of their house and it's 22 degrees outside don't go find them you know that that's ridiculous it's asinine so yeah fuck hoa window that's totally different it's public property so if you want to take this to a lawyer and by all means i don't care go take it to a lawyer okay no crime has been committed you guys need to get out of here you can go in your car you can go in your car you can get your groceries and we can stop this whole i thing. need his phone number because i am going to talk to i him. will give you my phone number there you go if he wants to give your phone number then he can't if he doesn't he doesn't and i really don't want to but i'll give it to you for the sake of look we live in the same place if we can't have good energy here that's a bad thing I you from Adam. You just bought here from Massachusetts or wherever you're from, Maryland. You, I've lived here 15 years. Okay. You're a newbie. Here. I just, yeah, I moved here a <laughs> few months ago. <laughs> I need your phone number. Being a newbie has nothing to do with this. See? That, that's the type of bitch that I, I just want to let somebody just break her fucking jaw. Like, so, I've, I've, you're a newbie. I don't know where you're from. I don't know you from Adam. Who the fuck cares? He bought his house. He lives into the neighborhood. He's trying to cohabitate with you all. And, and you're saying because he has different colors uh, on his windows that you're going to call the police and he's a newbie and you've been there all this time. Poor you. You've never been anywhere else. Like, that's that's that ownership shit. And that shit gets dangerous because... I've seen a lot of videos and interrogations where people like this have gotten into these situations and and then they feel that that because they've been there so long that it's theirs like the whole area belongs to them. They really think in their fucking heads like this street that you're on, the sidewalk, all of this is mine because I've been here the longest. It's like, no, 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 get the fuck out of here. And I've seen interrogations where it's gotten so bad that the person has, you know, uh, shot the other person over arguing over stuff like that. Paying attention? Do you see this behind me? Russian warships are now entering the Red Sea, but that's not all. Do y'all remember when I just showed you that Assad welcomed Putin to build bases in Syria, but more specifically, in the Eastern Golan Heights, the one-third of the region that Syria claimed? Any military analyst that's watching this situation knew it was a bad omen when Putin put a base right here. Well, now Russia is claiming that all of Golan Heights belongs to Syria, and they are trying to push out, allegedly, the IDF and the other groups. At the same exact time, they have all these ships in the Red Sea. Don't forget, we still have Eisenhower in the Red Sea. Now, with all this going on, I want to put you in remembrance of the dream that God gave me about this exact situation in September of 2022. It was one of my first videos I posted in December of 2022. And everything I'm about to say in this video was unheard of at the time. Everyone thought the Russian thing was going to blow over, especially not get to the Middle East. 
and I had another dream. I saw very, 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 very vividly, I saw a white horse, and it was holding, um, like a Iranian type blade. I googled it and found that this was a sword the horse was holding. I heard the voice of God, and he told me that US and NATO were the horse. The white horse was given a bow and crown, and he went forth to conquer. After I saw the horse, I heard God, I saw the sword, I saw the horse, I saw it in midair, and it was going right towards Russia. After that, that still voice told me that Russia was going to attack Israel. Now, seeing how all this stuff is transpiring in Golan Heights, don't forget, Benjamin Netanyahu made Trump Heights, a place in memory of Donald Trump. I find that a really odd coincidence. And of course, all this stuff is transpiring right before the eclipse. Does it mean anything? I don't know. To watch the whole video is pinned on my page. You guys can let me know what you think. Uh, I've always thought, not always, but pretty much for a while now, I've known that we were in World War III. It's just not looking like any other war that you guys have seen. I mean, it, it's, it's mostly cyber, it's electronic, it's a lot of things. But it's not like any other war, that's for sure. It. High heels were invented to avoid stepping in poop. Perfume was created to mask the stench of feces, and princess dresses were designed for easy public urination and defecation. Yes, this all took place in what we think of as the romantic era of medieval Europe, which was far dirtier than you might imagine. The streets and even the Grand Versailles Palace were littered with human waste. Walking down the street, you better carry an umbrella, lest you get hit by falling excrement. Noble women, adorned in their splendid voluminous princess gowns, would simply relieve themselves where they stood, especially during long banquets, leaving behind quite the unsanitary scene. To combat the pervasive odor, King Louis XIV of France, who wasn't fond of bathing, popularized the use of perfume to cover up both body odor and the smell of feces, making it a sought-after luxury among the aristocracy. Additionally, Europeans invented high heels and stockings to keep their feet clean from the muck, with the tallest heels reaching up to 50 centimeters, illustrating the depth of the filth on the streets. The prevailing feudal mindset, which held that everything, including dust and waste, was created by God, led people to see public urination and defecation as something not to be ashamed of, but rather a point of pride. This, combined with the high population density and the absence of indoor plumbing, turned entire cities into veritable cesspools. No wonder Voltaire remarked on this era as dirty and barbaric, highlighting the stark difference between the idealized view of medieval Europe and its grimy reality. I absolutely believe it and know it. Uh, people think that that was a time to be romanticized, but when I watch movies that were made in that time, I always think of things like this because I know how how they were. New York was the same way. New York had a time when uh, people, uh, Europeans, were uh, migrating from Europe into the U.S. and they came in on Ellis Island. And so you're talking about... You know, the same thing, especially with the Irish and the Italians. You're talking about just shit city. You know, it's just fecal matter everywhere. But the funny thing about this is, you know, almost 2,000 years ago in Rome in Egypt, they had aqueducts. They had proper toilets that had uh, uh, septic systems. Well, something akin to a septic system you know they had irrigation they had all of these things way back then and i always thought that these times were not they were not they were either not depicted correctly or there was like a small reset that happened because they were so far behind the actual times you know you've got you've got you know 
2000, well, maybe about 1400 years ago before this, they had all these problems solved. They had these major bathhouses in, uh, in Rome. And, uh, and I mean, just beautiful marble, just beautiful bathhouses. And they had pipes that would come in and it would let some of the heat out while they're bringing heat in uh, in other ways so you're getting the sauna and the hot bath and they had you know a, a type of septic system to where when you would feculate you know your feces would go out you know it wasn't a, a flush type thing it was a constantly moving thing but I just thought that this time was always strange to me in certain areas. It was like they were in their own little bubble and didn't learn anything from the past. You have to listen. Wait, Do you think you can improve response. America I by determinedly be and avowedly condemning Fox News without acknowledging that you're participating in the same game? I... Did you not just listen to someone who plainly legitimately believes in this country and believes it's possible to change, but is bound by corruption, is bound by the lobbying system? Surely it's clear to you, Bill, as one of the great pundits and experts and comic voices that systemic change is required. Money has has to be taken out of politics. We need new political systems that genuinely represent ordinary Americans so that we can overcome cultural differences. And bickering about which propagandist network is the worst is not going to save a single American life, not improve the life of a single American child, not going to improve America's standing in the world, and the world needs a strong America. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. So you have an obligation, a duty. I've always loved Russell Brand. He's so he he's so eloquent with his speaking, but so forceful as well. And he's in he's insanely intelligent. Like not just in his speaking. If you watch one of his interviews where he came on, a, I forget it was one of these New York shows where they were doing like a morning show, and I I can't remember the name of it because I quit watching TV like eight years ago. But anyways, my whole point is he came in there dressed, you know, the way he dresses, and he took over the interviews. There's there were five people there, and he's on the end. And so he starts once they once their banter kicks in and then, you know, it, it goes to him. He just completely takes over the interview and he's insulting and, and just ripping them apart. And they don't even realize it at the time. So they're just laughing about it like it's some big joke. And then he points over to the computers and he's like, well, what are they doing? You know, what? They're on social media. They're on Facebook. What are they doing? You know, and, and they're like, yeah, that, that's their job. They have to update in real time. And he's like, so these are the real people doing the real work. What do you all do? You sit here? And, you know, it's just beautiful. Uh, just beautiful the way he uses his intellect to 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 not just, you know, verbally educate people but to you know in a, in a in a mannerism way just destroy them and they didn't even know it at the time they're just kiki and haha -ha the, the whole thing but he was actually ripping them apart and they had no idea it's beautiful first we were friends then became lovers you was more than my girl we was like brothers all night we would play fight under covers now you gone can't love you <laughs> I haven't listened to a Diddy song since like shit the early 2000s so I wouldn't know what any of them say but that's funny I'm sure that's true on most of his stuff we just didn't key into it at that time they want to retain those workers by providing benefits such as temporary housing, a relocation stipend, part time off to a better acclimate to their new lives. Em uh, employees will also receive on site child care and transportation as well as paid time off, off to attend court hearings. And they're also saying that they're allocating $1.5 million to help them with legal services. Tonight at 8, we're going to take a closer look at my colleague Megan Smith and I at what the process looks like for migrants 48 hours after they arrived into the city. Of New York. That is fucking ridiculous. Did you see what they're doing? 
like they can do they can pull in migrants and give them all of this but they can't do it for americans they already have like uh certain countries that you come from say india or the middle east those areas they get a business voucher so they get uh, a voucher that will allow them to either start or purchase another business and take it over that's why you started seeing them owning gas stations and subways and all this stuff long ago we can't get those same things we can't go get you know a voucher for a couple hundred thousand dollars to go buy a subway and then run it or a gas station and then run it but they're giving this stuff out to non-Americans, to migrants. That's the fucked up part. You could cure so... I don't even need to go in. You guys know what could happen if they fucking, you know, let us do those things. But no, they don't. They don't They do not do it at all. And I think that that's, in, that's insanely fucked up. Like, this country, everything about it is just so fucked up when it comes to these people. Not the people, but these people, you know, these people, them, the they's, the them, the fucking people who are, you know, getting bills written and laws changed and all of this shit. Can't stand it. None of it benefits us. You, Mark Zuckerberg, if you sue me, and we gonna battle, because we know you're a reptilian. <laughs> That's why you're hiding in the bunker, dude. I it's hilarious, come on. Don't be, are you working for the elites, Loki? Are you working for the elites? You have nice red hair. You're a beautiful woman. I love you. Don't worry about it. I've not said one lie. Now, if I say one lie, then yeah, you got me. Hey, if I say one lie, you got me. I'll say that. If you can find out I said one lie of all the things I'm saying, then you got me. I'm bold for the Lord. It says in the Bible, if you're going to boast about anything, you boast about the Lord. Hey, he's putting some serious claims out there, and almost everything he said, he's got some way to back it up. But, you know, we already knew Mark Zuckerberg wasn't human. You know, Mr. I don't know what the fuck to do with my hands. You know, just ain't here. The, the, I have these. You want the, what, what I do? These? I have them. He doesn't, we, we know something's up with that motherfucker. Like, he doesn't even act human. He is so, he's worse. You, you know, you've got kids these days, and, and I've got cousins like this to where they grew up just being raised by screens, and then they get out into the world with people, and they have zero social skills, you know? They have zero social skills, and... You know, you, you've got people like that everywhere, and and that's a fucked up situation in and of itself, but, you know, I think Zuckerberg is far beyond that type of person. Like, a lot of these kids, you know, uh, are normal, some have Asperger's or high-functioning autism, but... You have the ones like Zuckerberg that are just not human because they don't fit into any of those uh, diagnoses at all. Like, he is just something right the fuck out of some kind of weird uh, reptilian hybrid. I don't know. I don't know. He's not human, though. I'm going to do a water test, electrocoagulation, tap water. We've got smart water made by Coca Cola. Vivian. This is the electro coagulation apparatus. 
You see the bubbling start straight away. This is breaking the electrical bonds between the, the substances in the water. It's going to reveal them and tell us more about the water. We've done a pH test and a PPM test on all, all waters. So we've got pH of the tap water 7.4, the smart water 7.2, the even 7.4 and the distilled water 7.1. And the PPM parts per million, tap water 276, smart water 225, Evian 265 and the distilled water 002. It's usually 000, but it picks up carbon dioxide as soon as it comes into the jug and it absorbs it. So as you can see, the smart water is getting really dark. The tap water is also getting very murky. And as we can see, all the sediments in the water that are being revealed this is what fills up our bodies, it gets in, all, all in our tissue, in between our joints, causes um, arthritis later on in life and all different different problems and conditions and leads to these dis diseases. And to hydrate ourselves we want to be drinking water that can go into the cells. These waters they can't hydrate us properly because the molecules are all, all clumped together. And hydration is one of the number one causes of conditions and, and diseases. Right, so it's getting hot now. I'm going to turn the machine off. Let's let that one go on for a little bit longer. And as we can see, the colours have been revealed. We've got black for smart water. Basically, pure heavy metals, zinc, lead, lead copper, mag, uh, manganese, and cadmium. So it's just filled with heavy metals. The tap water is slightly blue and green. So we've got bacteria, viruses, carcinogens, organic phosphorus, fertilizers, detergents, and pesticides. And with the green as well as arsenic, mercury, lead, copper, and sodium. So all them poisons, and this is what we feed our families, our kids, our babies, you know, mixing, mixing it in with everything. So we've got all these problems. Mercury is like one of the most poisonous things you can, you can possibly have. Arsenic's a poison. We've got bacteria, pathogenic ba ba bacteria in the water. Let's turn this one off now. Right, and you can see the Evian is slightly yellow. And I would say a little bit off green, so it's got lots of um, organic minerals in there, uh, other organics, possible fluoride, silicon compounds, and some heavy metals, arsenic, mercury, lead, and copper, and sodium. And as you can see, the distilled water having no parts per million in there is totally, totally clear. And really, this should prove a point to get on the distilled water, hydrate yourself, cleanse yourself and treat your body and your families well love and gratitude thanks for Matthew on the camera and I'm Darren Brock this is one of the things I'm most serious about uh, I use a reverse osmosis machine and I have filters everywhere I don't have an entire like home house filtering system yet and I'm not sure if I want one uh, but I do have a reverse osmosis machine for water. So if I'm drinking water. I'm drinking it out of that, you know, uh, and it adds the minerals that your body needs. Also, it keeps it at the perfect pH balance. You can get those on Amazon for a decent price. Uh, I got a, a, a bit of a, I wouldn't say a high end one. I'd say like mid range, you know, uh, but it does it does really really well and that's what I use for anything I drink you know my juices anything I cook with um, my shower filters out everything uh, I forget it's like uh, 0 0.999999 microns of everything that could be in your system because what's the use of 
actually drinking live water when you get into the shower and then your pores open up and then all of this fluoride and arsenic and stuff gets into your skin because what they say the FDA tells you is in your water is completely wrong. So each month I donate to a site called EWG.org. Go there. You can type in your zip code and it'll show you what's in your water. When you donate, you can also get a test kit and test your water and send it to them. And they'll tell you, you know, that who knows when the, well, they tell you when it was last updated. But uh, one of my co-workers in Atlanta did this to his water and he has 18% chloroform in his water. You know, chloroform, that shit that, you know, like uh, grapers, grapists use when they, you know, put on the rag and, and you're just out. Yeah, he's got that 18%. It's fucking ridiculous. That's why I do not touch it. I don't let my family wash their hands or bathe with it. I don't cook with it. I don't drink it. Nothing. Fuck that. They're showing their faces. Baphomet. Baphomet as a toy from McDonald. Can you fucking believe this shit? Like, look at this. Can you actually fucking believe it? Baphomet as a kid's toy? This shit has gone way too far. I, d I don't touch McDonald's anyway, so it doesn't bother me. My, my child, no one, no one goes to McDonald's, but just the fact that I know so many people do, and so many people's children are going to be exposed to this, that it's, it's just disgusting. They, they should actually be in prison for doing something like this. <laughs> Day three, you still want to fuck with me? <laughs> I love me some Mike Tyson. Love me some Tyson. Tyson is my absolute all-time favorite boxer, bar none, hands down. Love Tyson. Tyson's amazing. Uh, I don't know if you had this when you were little, but like we used to have this little game where you'd say, you know, would you hop into the ring with Tyson for a million dollars? And you, a lot of people say, yeah, I'd take that one hit and just be out. Or uh, I would just, you know, take a fake hit and be out. And I'm like, one hit on an untrained person that's not used to getting hit? Tyson might break the entire side of your face or actually break your skull. Like, indent your skull like you don't want to mess with tyson i would not take that money because what good is taking that money when i'm just a slobbering vegetable you know and i can't enjoy it i would never do that you gotta be out of your mind wake up don't eat let your glycogen deplete because if you mind your gut you keep your mind you do get rid of this application it's not going to be before i show you this i grew up drinking kool-aid as a kid i think we all did High fructose corn syrup, red full. Transitioning over to adult beverages, you're going to have your high fructose corn syrup and your red 40. I devoured these as a child. Once again, red 40. There's something called the 50 brain cell challenge, where every one ingredient you eat is minus one brain cell. But what this will start to reveal to you, red 40, high fructose corn syrup, is that every large corporation has cut corners where you can't even find these products in other countries. So when you see a company owning the entire shelf from top to bottom, there's a high likelihood of two things, bioengineered and also going to have 
high fructose corn syrup, or some sort of oil. Sugars and oils are hyperpalatable, which makes the food taste good. So in something like this, you can find a laundry list of ingredients, a laundry list of food coloring, and a laundry list of sugar and oil. It's called hyperpalatable foods. So when you see party size, all you gotta do is flip it around and say, okay, so potatoes and vegetable oil and salt. Too much sodium is bad for gut health. Too many ingredients that are not supposed to go in your body are also bad for gut health. So when you're grocery shopping and you see this, which it's banana, it's got one ingredient that's good, but I would just eat a banana. Of the unusual event that is now being seen beyond the Lord Keys. And state lawmakers now allocating $2 million in the state budget to study that event. Our update tonight is this week's Don't Trash Our Treasure. A marine mystery in the Lower Keys that continues to baffle. Shock. Oh, oh, oh sh what the hell? And break hearts. I'm so sorry, baby. According to FWC, since December, at least 21 critically endangered small tooth sawfish have been reported dead. Separately, more than a dozen species of fish have been seen spinning and acting erratically. Now, we don't know if these two events are related, but we, we have investigations and lines of inquiry going on right now. And officials, not the only ones investigating. Well, back in February of last year, I noticed that uh, pinfish started behaving odd, like they were playing dead and then they, some of them were spinning. For Greg Furstenworth, the Lower Keys are more than just a vacation destination. This is home. That's why after he saw that first pinfish, he pressed record and hasn't put down the camera since. Oh no. And then uh, come around November, I started seeing the uh, behavior start doing that again. So we're in the waters between Little Torch Key and Big Pine Key. Most of the activity has been documented in these inland waters. Scientists say so far it doesn't appear to be a low oxygen event. And the necropsies coming back don't show any signs of pathogens or bacteria. At first I was scared and now I'm just curious of what the environment's going to turn into if this keeps on progressing. What is he doing? Yeah. It's that curiosity that's fueling both residents and tourists to document these bizarre behaviors from Key West now all the way north to Key Largo. We're up in the upper keys right now off of Key Largo and um, this is our knowledge the first time that we're seeing our are spinning. We have a very serious situation in the lower Florida Keys now that could be spreading to the middle and upper keys. Dr. Brian LaPointe is a lower keys resident and research professor at FAU's Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute. For more than four decades, Dr. LaPointe has seen the changes in water quality at his underwater laboratory at Lou Key. Back in the 70s and 80s when I used to dive at Lou Key when it was pretty much still intact uh, as it has been for thousands of years. The shallow coral reef was covered with branching corals. Unfortunately, we, we, we don't experience that anymore. Instead, experiences like this one have become more common. That all just seems so extremely strange to me. I mean, part of me wonders if they practiced shooting an EMP from a satellite into the ocean. You know, whether it was Russia or the U.S., it seems like they shot an EMP into the water to see what would happen. But you've got, like, all this other stuff going on, too, to where they're supposed to be sending three rockets, you know, up to the firmament during the solar eclipse and all this other weird stuff. So who knows what the truth is. This is probably one of my favorite videos because I am a Gen Xer. Let's get into it. Gen X, how did you guys do it? How did you stay out of the generational hate world? Oh, I think there's a better question to be asked here. Would you really want us to get involved? Because Gen X truly is the last of the FAFO generation. And before you ask us to FA, ask yourself, do you really want to FO? This generational hate war, we're not involved because we don't care. Do you really want us to care? Yeah, we didn't get participation trophies, so before we get on, understand there's gonna be a clear-cut winner and loser. It will be a hands-on activity. Gen X is the last of the feral and wild and free children. It's like Lord of the Flies. We were all raised by each other. Think of it kind of like the Jungle Book. We're all just Mobley. And before either parties think that they could hang with Gen X and drink the Kool-Aid, I need to remind you our Kool-Aid was made with hose water. Our parents weren't out here gentle parenting anything. They did not raise us to be their friend. Truthfully, they didn't really raise us at all. We came home when the street lights came on because home 
There was chores at home. There was work to be done at home. And we understood that we didn't want to do that. For Gen X kids, home is not where the heart is. Home is where they wanted you out by the time you were 18. You Think about that, because we all did the same thing. If you were out playing all day, you know, you just ran to grab a hose and drank out of it if you were hot and thirsty. Like, we drank out of hoses all the time. I would not drink out of a hose if you paid me to now. Like, how crazy is that? It wasn't that long ago that we were doing this, you know? You're talking 30 years ago or so. And now, I would never fucking touch hose water. But we used to do it all, we grew up doing that. Like, you know, hot day, turn the hose on, first you let the hot water go out, and then it gets cold, and then you're sitting there drinking it, pass it to each other. Nothing ever happened. It strengthened our immune systems. I'm, I'm, ax I'm absolutely for sure of that. But now, you know, there's just so much shit out there that, ugh, I feel sorry for the kids of these days. I have a job. I just don't think people understand. Gen X truly doesn't have like a social group. Our social group was like the breakfast club. You just dealt with the people who lived on your street. Your friends were the people who lived in your area. That was your crew. You rode around on your little 10 speeds with them like little Sons of Anarchy Motorcycle Club. People who grew up as Gen X have more miles by the time they were 13 years old on their 10 speeds than you'll ever get off of some kind of spin class. Sidebar, I rode around in the old neighborhood the other day from where my house was to where the pool was. It is five and a half miles. We made that every day, twice a day. And the reason why Gen X is so quiet now is because... We've seen the system fail multiple times. Right wing, left wing, it's the same bird. Oh, the government's failing its people. Yes. And if you are waiting for it to fix itself, then you're only failing yourself. We want to be left alone. We don't want to people with people unless there are people because not every person is worth putting pants on for. We are all at the age now to where we are built for comfort, not speed. If I have to leave the house, there better be a clear cut reason. We all have thick skin. Not everything offended us. We had the freaking goonies. Not that our give a damn was all too terribly high to begin with, but somewhere between that time and now, it is officially broken. X has realized a long time ago that opinions are a lot like butts. Everybody has one. Doesn't mean I want to hear it. We didn't go home and tell our parents about the adventures. We understood that snitches got stitches. We kept our mouths shut. So don't involve us in a situation that you don't want us to get involved in. Stayed out of it because we didn't care. If you give us a reason to care, you might have wished that we would have stayed out of it. Ain't that the damn truth? That's a statement that the feral housewives can completely understand. If she's got to put a brawl on, shit's about to get done. See, the feral housewives kind of have this idea about opinions uh, and feelings. They're a lot like butts. Everybody has one. Doesn't mean I want to listen to it. We can agree to disagree, or we can agree that I just don't care. And that is the true ferality of it all. These women, these fathers, these kids, these feral breed... They just don't care about anybody else. If you're not funding, feeding, or fun timing me, and you want to put your two cents in towards the opinion of what me and mine do, we don't care. People are the worst part about peopling, and the feral people completely understand that. Not all people are worth peopling for. Ain't nobody in the feral breed worried about keeping up with the Joneses. We don't even like our neighbors. Hell, we're probably the reasons they all have an HOA. Uh, your, your grass is a little high. That's because I hadn't cut it yet because I've been at work. I'm going to spend the time doing the stuff I want to do before I handle that. It's not about hippy dippy, free love, feng shui, or chakra. It's just that, truthfully, man, y'all's opinions bring down our vibe. We're the parents that the other parents at the PTA are definitely talking about. Is he wearing Crocs? He doesn't, he doesn't really dress like he's 40. Yeah, that's because I've got 40 hours worth of overtime, Carl. When I'm off the clock, I'm off the clock. I'm built for comfort, not speed. We all know what other parents are doing with their kids. Look here, Uncle Jesse and Aunt Becky. I'm not paying for their grades, okay? But yes, I did their science project as well. 
We're the kids that your parents warned you about all grown up. That's what we are. But the difference is our kids like us. You may not understand our love language of insults, but that's the way it works. I would never cuss at my kid and I would never, I would never flip my kid off. Hey, it's all cool. You do you. I think the older I've gotten, the more I've realized it just doesn't matter. Like, why are we trying to impress people that we're not even impressed by? The feral parents, the feral mom and dads, we're the ones that are out there that we see our kids as little individuals. They're the best part of me and the best part of their mom, and I want to just make them the best little people they can possibly be. I'm not going to let my kids live in a bubble because society says that they need to. No, one day I'm not going to be there to hold their hand, so I'm going to enjoy hanging out with them as much as I possibly can. Not everyone is worth putting pants on for isn't like an actual physical thing, like we're, we're going to wear pants. It's more the idea that if you're easily offended or easily triggered or you really care about other people's opinions, these feral parents, we, we don't. We don't care. We're coaching Little League. We're doing Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. We're cheer mom and dads. We want our kids to have as much fun as they possibly can. Be the person that you needed growing up. In a world full of horses, be a unicorn. Well, you can read the sticker. Tell me what makes y'all feral. By the way, all of these are available up here or down here. I wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly, I wholeheartedly agree with everything he just said. We didn't get participation trophies, and I argue that today with the kids in my family. You know, like, no, everybody should not get participation trophies. But you've got people that just, they love everyone. They just love, love, love. And everybody should get a trophy for trying. No, the fuck you should not. You don't get a trophy for trying if you fucking suck. If you were not in the top three, then you should not get anything. And, and that will teach you to strive harder. If you just get trophies because you participated, then you have no reason, no, there's nothing telling you to go harder. And you're like, well, I'm just going to get the same trophy as the, the person that was the best because I participated, so, you know, why do any more? And, and that's the mindset of most of these people these days, and that's sad. That's what's bringing down everything. Like, I didn't even know what the fuck a participation trophy was until like eight years ago. And I was like, do what? They, they got what? For what? Participating in what? They got a trope. Like, all these trophies are for all of them? They all got trophies. For just showing up? Oh, that's fucking wrong. That is absolutely wrong. I used to get screamed and yelled at by my football coach, called by a bullhorn that was five feet next to my head by my drumline uh, instructor. I mean, like, we did not get participation shit. Like, it was, it was real shit in the 90s and 80s. These kids are just, it, it makes a generation of, like, really soft people that have no thick skin. They don't know how to act around people. They have no manners. Nobody says, no. nobody respects their elders anymore, which is, like, really weird. Because we were always taught to cherish them. You know, th these kids are just, but... I wouldn't let mine be like that, but I see everybody else doing it. It's just weird. Remember when everyone thought he was crazy? When you see black eyes, like a uh, blue face and, you know, like that, he got beat up, but he didn't get beat up where you thought he got beat up. He got beat up somewhere else. Okay. And so uh, the eyes come out and they call them panda eyes and they do this. To so you see people with these cigars and they're, they, you know, all these big celebrities, they all have the cigar in common. That, that, that's that big ass thing between their legs that they're sticking in. And it's one big society of it. Now, when it comes down to the selling of the, 
There's shipping and trafficking and people, adults, the moms, the dads, right there on Target commercials, right there on Walmart commercials. And you're looking at the people that are missing and they're smiling like they're happy, but they're going back to hell. And that's really what it is. You know, um, these are actually adults. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein created this saga, and this is what he is great at doing. He's great at kidnapping someone, turning them into a, putting them in a dead celebrity's body, and screwing the life out of them after he makes a ton of money off of their ass on his private little beach. So you have a private little beach full of celebrities and bodies getting screwed, and nobody cares because they're supposed to be dead. And this has been a major market, a major market that he tried to blame on Oprah Winfrey. So, uh, you know, uh, yeah, that's what I feel about that. And, and uh, this panda eye thing is, you know, the panda, 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 all that stuff is just, is so real. You know, you, it's so real. You know, you want to go get my Shaba until your eyes pop out, go ahead. I mean, that's up to you. But, uh, you know, I just think that, you know, people just need to realize what they're looking at when they're watching the television. Everything is right in front of you. The revolution was televised and don't nobody give it. The crazy thing is he's speaking so much truth, so many facts, but it sounds so outlandish to the average person that doesn't Keep up with these fringe topics, these theories that are not conspiracies. Like everything he says has actually been proven to be factual. And yeah, he's had his, you know, issues too, but like it's already came out. All of the stuff has come out. And it is beyond. Like, it is just beyond me how people don't realize what's going on. They have no idea what's going on. At all. Just like with the Baphomet McDonald's shit. Or the Chick-fil-A shit, where they're like, you know, we, we used to use natural meats and that with no hormones or antibiotics, but now we're going to have to use antibiotics. And then they're like... Now we've got lab meat, and we can sell you lab meat at a restaurant. So if you order filet mignon, then you're going to get it, but it might be lab-grown meat, which never expires. I saw them do it. I, I posted it. It was on, a, on one of my videos where they had chicken for two years, and they brought a piece out, thawed it out, and then cooked it, and because it was older, and then they're cooking it now, after it's already been cooked a few times already, they're cooking it again. And the host is like, oh, that, that smells just like chicken breast. And then they taste it. Oh, yeah, it tastes just like chicken breast. Oh, that's delicious. Do you know Hershey, all these companies, they have massive corporations with chemical engineers. I knew one. She wanted to do something like to help save the world and ended up working at one of these uh one of these corporations and poor girl used to have to do these studies and everything about like how much of this to put in there one girl I saw this on TV her whole job she was a chemical engineer major her whole job was to take to QA the chips and so she would have the pressure machine and she would just push it down and at a specific PSI at when the chip snapped, if it didn't snap at an exact PSI, that means that the dopamine from your brain doesn't get released when you bite into it. So it has to be at a specific PSI, like the devilish satanic shit about that. They have figured out how to fucking program your brain for this bullshit ass not food. And people don't realize that. They're just sitting there just fucking just, you know, deep throating all this fucking shit. And it's bad for you. And they don't get it. It's always oh, so good. No, it's not. It's not good and it's not good for you. You're just releasing dopamine because of, it's a habitual thing that you do. It's a habit. You eating this bullshit food and 
you're an emotional eater or a whatever kind of eater, so you're releasing dopamine when you bite into it. Because it wouldn't happen if it was like, you know, the Japanese version of that, it definitely wouldn't happen. If it was the German version of that, definitely would not happen. But because it's this specific one, you know, like, we got to do better. We got to do better. We got to teach people better. And that's why this awareness is so important to get out there. You've got to get this out there. It is extremely hyper important that people know this stuff, in my opinion. I might be wrong. I might be one of the few that think that this is extremely important, but I know there's other others out there like me. I might only get 20 or 30 views per video, but the 20 or 30 views, the people know what I'm talking about, and I'm putting it out there. And even if they don't like or comment or subscribe, they know that I'm speaking the truth of what I say because I come from a place where we never had any of this shit. And then I end up in a place where we have all of this shit. And so I've, I see the bird's eye view. I see the big picture, you know, and it, it's fucked up. They put it in our face. By the all-seeing eye, we are worthy, we are not. was just gonna be that do y'all really think that everything we're seeing right now is by chance it's not over the last few months but especially the last few weeks i've noticed a very disturbing chain of events all these things are happening sporadically just being thrown at us while we lead up to this eclipse now i know you're thinking it has nothing to do with one another yes it does a quick rewind so y'all can get into my mind we had the moscow attack that just happened there's been a ton of mass shootings in the U.S. in the last month. We've had two huge, what they call geomagnetic storms, in the last 30 days. The list of names of incriminated people keep getting longer and longer and longer. More on this later tonight. The royal family, the Rothschild, all these incredibly powerful dynasties having misfortune happen. And the red cows being sacrificed at the most opportune time ever all while we await this eclipse, which if you didn't know, it says air travel could be disrupted from 7th to the 10th of April. Warned by the FAA, not me. Now, I've already explained this eclipse to you in great detail, from the Salem's, to the Nineveh's, to the National Guard, and everything else. And I've showed you their supposed doomsday map, which aligns almost perfectly with their declassified document of the Adam and Eve story. Somehow they would know the future, reminds me of the 40s when they were using astral projection to see what the opposition was doing. Along with Project Looking Glass and all other sorts of divination, while our wealthiest citizens in the U.S. have been preparing bunkers for a long time, but especially over the last month. You know, they say that Solomon is the wisest man to live, and he said there is nothing new under the sun. You may know it as history repeats itself. But I know one thing, we are in the last repeat. Again, I take you back to the great earthquakes of 1811 and 1812. That was three months after a total solar eclipse. Now here's what I came to say. We're not just looking at a physical alteration of the world and people, but spiritual. Before this came out, or before I got word of it, I had a huge warning that along with the false light, the Antichrist, the false prophet, the false movement, we are going to see demonic manifestations like never before. So why this? I saw this meme, and it really, really made sense. Pause to see for longer. 
what we're seeing right now in the U.S. and the whole world is demonic manifestations coming to pass, affecting the physical world in every single avenue we could even think about. That's what this was. Do you think this just happens randomly, just physically, just because? No. There's demons operating in high places. The Bible tells us that Satan comes to steal and destroy so we know his demons do the same thing and they're causing havoc upon the earth and we have seen nothing yet and everything we're seeing in the skies is God drawing himself and while this is all happening I've seen the numbers 333 three, three, over 10,000 times in the last few weeks at some point a human being decides that you're not smart enough to know the truth and so this right here is the Bible from 1775 telling us that we used to have 13 months. Vader is the 13th month. Vader. And this is the other truth that I've heard now. We are living in sin by going to church on Sunday. Okay? Sunday is the first day of the week. Sunday is the first day of the week. The Sabbath is Saturday. Days of the week. First day of the week, Sunday. Second day, Monday. Look at that. Seventh day or Sabbath, Saturday. Can you believe this? Two, these are two things I heard recently on TikTok. Oh, there's 13 months in the year. And I was like, what? Then they start thinking about stuff like, okay, what does October mean? Well, that means the eighth month. What does December mean? D deck 10. It's the 10th month. You know, so it's like all these, you start thinking about it. Like, geez, September, what's Sep? Seventh, you know? And it also, Nov, November. What's Nov? Nine. It's the ninth month. And now I, I have it right here in my 1775 Bible. At some point, a human being decides. I'm sorry, but old lighters are just more than lighters. Remember, they were talking about these med beds when people had been aboard, uh, when people had been abducted or aboard uh, spacecrafts, and they said that they had seen, you know, uh, or they had been put in these med beds, and these med beds can, you know, they use uh, frequency and vibration sound to heal you. They can heal, you know, anything pretty much, and that's what these med beds are used for. This used to be a conspiracy theory. Here it is, right in front of your face. It's just amazing. Any type of soil disruption can be found. Not only can it scan, if it scans it, it can also address it. So if you have a health issue and it detects bacteria, there's a healthy frequency that can assist. So right now, our gentleman inside is doing a, is doing a correction. So he's using the headphones while he's in this 1.5 oxygen chamber and getting that health real time. We have the ability to put lots of technology inside, including sound vi acoustic vibration inside. Once he's done with the meta correction, we can use the light frequency, sound frequency, and use the direct curve. So if you have any questions, reach out to us at antiagingbed.com. Call 800-385-4243. 
you can get a scan in a, a, a situation like this for free or we can make you one with a greeting. Uh, set your appointment uh, at the number provided and see about trying this revolutionary technology that might be pound for pound the most powerful health technology in the world. What do you guys think? I'm going to call that number and see where the closest one is and see if I can make an appointment just to see it. You know, if it's real, 800-385-4243 to schedule an appointment free of charge. Or you can go to antiagingbed.com. Good to know. You are starting to wake up to a lot of things we woke up to 20 years ago. And because of TikTok, now you're starting to wake up to these things. But I want to warn you really quick. You see, I've been who I've been for the last 25 years. I woke up to a whole lot in this world. But I want to warn you, because of TikTok, some of you are waking up and learning different things, and now you want to share your experiences. You want to talk to people that you know about what you found out. But I want you to be careful and tread lightly because you're going to lose a lot of people in your life that you used to have because they're going to think there's something wrong with you. Your life is not going to be the same when you become part of the 1% and you're no longer part of the 99%. I'm a part of the 1%. I'm a part of the 1% mentally and financially, okay? You have to understand once you grow to this level and, and you become addicted to learning so much truth about what's going on in this world, it's gonna get lonely at the top. You ever hear people say it's lonely at the top? You're gonna get lonely at the top because all your friends and family are down here. All your friends and family are down here. They not only don't understand what you're saying, they don't want to learn anything. They don't want to grow mentally. They don't want to know the truth of this world. They want to live their life. They want to go to high school, go to college, obey the law, and pass away after eating a bunch of, a bunch of bad food. And in the middle of all that, they want to celebrate Christmas and birthdays and, you know, you get in a new shiny car or a new job, right? That's all their life is. When you come become the level of the human that I'm at, a lot of things even TikTok won't let me talk about. I've had like maybe 30, 40 videos taken down because I go so deep. When you get to this level as a human, you're not going to have the same friends because a lot of people are not going to be around you because they're going to be uncomfortable to be around you when you get to the level of a human that i'm at and i don't say that to brag but it's just the reality of the situation when you get to this level you're going to start to feel like you don't want to be around all these other people because they talk about meaningless pointless conversations they're so concerned about what's going on in the celebrity life but they're broke they're so concerned about what's going on over here but they don't have nothing over there and you, you as a person, you like, yo, I don't want to listen to this. Like, you, you, you become such a high level individual that it's hard for you to listen to pointless conversations that do not bring money in and do that does not impact the world. All right. So I'm just warning you before you make that decision to keep on listening and learning and listening because you know TikTok offers more information on a social media account than any other social media account in history they have put a tight a tight grip on youtube instagram and facebook i lost three hundred thousand followers on facebook because of who i am i lost seventy five thousand followers on instagram because of who i am i lost forty thousand followers on youtube because i who i am imagine how that impacted my income when i made money from those platforms but me being who i am you can't stop me you can't hold me down i kept going i kept making money in other businesses i made six figures in another business six figures almost seven figures in another one the one i'm in now and you can't stop me okay because i'm not a part of their world i'm not a part of their job system and, and, and all that type of stuff now you're going to start making people feel uncomfortable with your conversation because your conversation is on a higher level. And a lot of things that you're calling true, they will say you're crazy, you're a conspiracy theorist, this, that, and the other. But at the end of the day, years will go by and then they, in their heart, 
they will see all the things that you've been talking about for years was the real reality. Yeah, he's spitting pure facts. And see, when you when you start to lose those people, it's normal, it's natural. They're not vibrating at your frequency. They can't understand what you're talking about. But don't worry about it. When you start to lose those people, you're going to need people like that to talk to. The law of attraction. Same people out there are going to need people like you to talk to. So you are got you guys are going to come together. It happens. So, you know, the law of attraction is going to bring all of that in. Whatever you're putting out, you know, you're losing these people. Well, it, it's time to go. You're on a different path now. And on that path, you're going to need people that you can talk to and, you know, speak with about things and so are they they're needing the same thing you are so attraction you guys will attract each other I see it all the time six years prior to the release of toy story pixar released a short film called knickknack they showed you hot location after hot location where all the knickknacks have on sunglasses then they take you to a land far away towards the edge of the shelf. They call it Gnome, Alaska, but they make the pun Gnome Sweet Gnome, showing you that this is your home. This character is not wearing sunglasses because he's at the edge of the world where the sun barely reaches the coldest place on earth, Antarctica. He finds the edge just like we did in Operation Deep Freeze. Then he proceeds to drill just like they did in Russia. Then he tries to blow it up, just like we did over the Pacific Ocean. Again, symbolizing the edge of the known world. was the name of the operation we were trying to explode the firmament? Operation Fishbowl. And we see here how if he actually did escape from his home sweet home beyond the firmament, he would be in water. Pixar obviously got the attention of Walt Disney in this short little film because Disney Studios has released every single Pixar movie. After all, Disney Studios filmed Operation Deep Freeze, and Walt Disney is an honorary member because he was there when they found the firmament of heaven and where it meets the earth. This is commemorated in his logo of the Magic Kingdom depicting a firmament and a tower whose top would reach unto heaven. That's interesting. I actually did not know that. What do you guys think about that? Let me know in the comments. Welcome to Bogota, Colombia. We're here chasing after the most dangerous drug in the world, Burundanga. Burundanga is the source of scopolamine, which is basically like the worst roofie you can ever imagine times a million. You're at the whim of suggestions like, hey, take me to your ATM. Hey, come with me to the hotel room while you're completely conscious and articulate. The deal with Burundanga is that it pretty much eliminates your free will. So you're awake and you're articulate and to anyone else watching you, it seems like you're perfectly fine, but you've completely lost control of your own actions. So you're at the whim of suggestions and that's how people take advantage of you. I don't know why they're out in the jungle making it seem like you have to go search far for this stuff. There was a video I saw on it where there was a, uh, there was a children's school and there were a couple of trees and bushes and it was actually growing right there like the stuff is very regular out there it grows all over the place it's like a weed so it grows everywhere i don't know why they're trying to act like you have to go trekking through the jungle to find it that's not the case at all heard a bunch of different stories really running the gamut 
Some of them sound like kind of campfire horror stories you're told when you're growing up, stuff like waking up in a bathtub with an organ cut out and a sign saying you have five hours to get to the hospital. Uh, we've of course also heard that it's used as a date rape drug. Um, we heard one particularly chilling story where a guy was taken back to his apartment, woke up the next morning in the empty apartment, completely confused as to what happened, went down and said to his doorman, you know, why is my apartment empty? What happened? And the doorman said, well, you brought it out with two of your friends last night, all your stuff, you loaded it into a van. And the guy was like, why in the hell would you let me do that? And he was like, because you told me to. So that, that's kind of the stuff we're dealing with here. Uh, complete elimination of free will um, while still acting, which is pretty much the scariest shit I can imagine. Definitely the scariest shit I can imagine. There's a, there's a few documentaries on it on YouTube, but one of the ones that I saw, it was, uh, it was strippers. And so they would take a little bit of this and like either put it in their drink or just put it on the rim of their drink. And you know, once they drink it, they have no idea what happened. They don't, they don't feel anything, but like he said, it makes all of your free will just dissipate. And so you're at the complete control of suggestions. And so there were a couple of strippers that talked about how they would get foreigners and they would, uh, they would give this to foreigners. And, uh, and then once, you know, it's kicked in, they would tell the foreigners, well, let's go back to your room. And they would take him to the ATM, make him empty out all of the money he can on all of his cards, go up to his room, take anything that was worthwhile to take that they could sell or whatever. But yeah, it's a crazy, it's a, it's a crazy drug. It's one of the only drugs, some, some people call it uh, the zombie drug is because you're walking around and you're like a zombie but you're more like a slave zombie because you'll do whatever someone tells you to do literally like there's nothing you won't do there's you you have no free will you have no rational thought somebody says hey why don't you you know cut your finger off and they're like yeah that'd be a good idea and you'll do it i mean you just have zero free will you have Nothing that says, hey, maybe not, you know, it's a, it's a crazy drug, but it's a, it's a weird one. Uh, one documentary said that the shamans would use that to uh, punish certain people. And so uh, certain shamans, well, they, the shamans wouldn't punish people. The shamans would make it for people who wanted to punish someone. And so, like, if somebody owed them money, like, there was one girl, uh, she had been missing for 15 years, and then they see her just kind of, you know, just kind of stumbling through town, and, you know, people are running up to her, like, is that, that looks like so-and-so, so-and-so, and so they, they call her family and say, hey, uh, I think you know your daughter's down here and they go running down there they're like oh my god we had a funeral for you we thought you were gone blah 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 and she's still not she had just she had just uh left uh the field that she had been working in so somebody had her just sleeping in like this little hut and just every day just doing the work they wanted in the field in the house just doing all of the work they wanted and that's all she did and every meal she was fed more of this so it never wore off for 15 years because she owed a debt so it, she was like a zombie slave and that was a real thing they show the full thing like when when she's found and everything coming through town it's a it's got to be the scariest thing I can think of because, well, that's one of the scariest things I can think of because you just can't say no. It's crazy.
Things you didn't know that you didn't know, part two. The word cannabis comes from the ancient Greek canna, meaning dog, and bis, meaning binary, or two. And the reason for that was that the Greeks scored their very first stash on the Dogon tribe of Mali. And when they asked the inevitable phrase, take me to your dealer, the Dogon pointed to Sirius, the dog star. They maintained that the plant had come from the second Sirius dog star, and it was a gift from the gods to promote love, harmony, and peace amongst humanity. Now, what's really cool about this is that modern astronomy only actually managed to physically observe Sirius B in 1970, but the Dogon have been celebrating this with songs, dances, and stories for thousands of years. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. I didn't know that. So the Dogon tribe, if you don't know who they are, uh, you'll see them. They're the ones that, during their celebrations, they have a helmet on that looks like an astronaut's helmet. And they've been doing this for hundreds of years. And they even talk about the a time before the moon was there. So they they even remember before the moon was ever there. And, yeah, the Dogon tribe are extremely amazing people their history goes back scientists have gone there archaeologists to talk to them and find out what they know you know they uh they've been able to uh talk about things that you know modern science didn't discover until years later really interesting this is not a regular face. They are trying to tell you that demons are walking with us. And this is their way of trying to tell us in secrets. They're trying to make this normal. So when we walk down the street and see one of these faces, we say, hey, it's just another person. No, these are demons. Remember, 2024 is going to unlock everything that was hidden. So all the time that we thought demons wasn't real, we're about to see it. When we thought aliens wasn't real, we're about to see it. It was a time where we needed our third eye to see these demons and spirits. Not no more, because the solar eclipse is all connected to events like this. People don't want to believe we are in the end times. They never did their spiritual work. They never did their shadow work. They just went about their life like, hey, shit is just regular. All these events is connected to the solar eclipse. But people still say the solar eclipse is just another day. They are releasing demons from under the ground. These demons once lived under the planet, but now they're being pushed up to the surface. So we're about to be walking around eating with them watching games with them, throwing everything with them. Shit, don't be surprised if they start making TikTok videos. The movie They Live came out in 1988. It tried to expose what was really happening behind the scenes. But people say, give me my popcorn, give me my hot dog. I just want to watch the movie. You missed what they was trying to tell you. But now nothing is hidden no more because everything that was hidden in the dark is coming to the light. The solar eclipse, dark and the light, and these demons are about to be seen with all of us. You can call them demons, jinns, Fallen angels, interdimensional beings, whatever name you want to give them. Just remember, they don't like us. The human race is being slowly replaced with artificial intelligence and demons. We are being replaced at a fast pace, but people still don't want to see it yet. If you put your cell phones down and look up, you will see all kinds of strange events happening above our heads. Yo, that's crazy that they're trying to sit here and make us think that when we start seeing this, it's a condition. Like, they're just, just blatantly out here saying, if you start seeing people looking like demons, it's a condition. It's you. It's not them. Out of your fucking mind, if I start seeing that shit, I'm fighting, swinging, I'm... No, that, that shit's not gonna be around me or mine. Not happening. Alcohol means body-eating spirit. Al cool in Arabic, hence why vodka is called spirits. Jinn is a jinn, which are invisible creatures in early religions. This is where jinx comes from. When you jinx something, it means bad luck. Because the spiritual planes is what they are hiding from you. They want you to believe everything is just physical. Jay-Z's alcohol brand has a Knight Templar symbol called the Cross of Lorraine, which is one of the highest orders of Freemasonry. Alcohol destroys the connection between your oversoul and your physical body by destroying brain cells, which then makes you more vulnerable for demons to enter your electromagnetic field and take control. Society is being ran by an ancient dark cult, which uses black magic and the dark usage of alcohol. 
Why do you think these are legal and this is legal? So Dubai is experiencing some bad weather, right? And when you see these flashes in the sky, the flashes of lightning, you'll see pyramids in the sky. And they are scattered all over the sky, you guys. And depending on what type of flash that we get, you see what I'm saying? Look at that. Look at that one. Look at that one. What is this? And there's some that's off in the distance as well, you guys. But only in certain flashes we're able to see that. Y'all see that? And it gets even crazier. Look, it gets even crazier. Check this one out. Check this one out. Watch. Shit crazy, y'all. All these crazy things happening around this time. And it's pouring over there. That purple lightning, that plasma. Look at that. Look at this. Y'all, look at that, y'all. Y'all see that? Look. It's going back into it. It's closing. It's merging with the top of the pyramid. That, whoa. You guys see that? That's crazy, y'all. What is going on? It's like an upside down world, you guys. Look. But yeah, you guys, it's literally like an upside down world, huh? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? It's crazy, man. In the pyramid in the sky. And again, things are getting more interesting. An upside down pyramid in the sky, which literally, I believe, that's an upside down world. That's crazy. What's a secret all men keep that women don't know? 1. When you ask us to say hi to someone on your behalf, we don't. 2. We're pretty confident that we could survive as the last man on earth. 3. We don't forget to ask for a bunch of details. We just don't care. 4. There's nothing wrong, sometimes we genuinely need to sit for a while and think about absolutely nothing. 5. That a grown man will see a stick while walking and think, gee, that's a nice stick. 6. You can talk shit about us to our face but in front of your friends or family builds resentment. 7. We fucking love compliments. Try it and see how far it gets you because while we may call you lovely things we rarely get so much in return, and your words mean more than you'll ever know. 8. Nice try Woman's Health Magazine. 9. When you ask us what we're thinking and we say nothing. 99% of the time that's true. The other 1% is something so god-awful stupid, childish, immature that it doesn't need to be said so we say nothing. Which is true. 10. We hurt more than you think we do. 11. This is the most cliche answer but it's too true. Doesn't matter how much effort women put into makeup and clothes, if a man finds a woman attractive, he will very likely find her as attractive without any of that, or he might even find her more attractive with casual clothes or PJs on a regular day. 12. When we do a big sigh, it is mostly because we forgot to breathe for a brief moment. 13. We don't remember exactly what happened on the second date, third date, etc. years later. We were just trying to keep from screwing it up each time. Do I remember walking on Mars for our third date? Of course honey, how could I forget? It happened exactly how you just described it to me. 14. A man is at his smoothest and most confident when he doesn't give a shit about the woman he's talking to. 15. If you ever want to make a dude happy out of nowhere just look at him and say, I think you'd do great in World War II. Watch how big that fucking smile will be. 16. We really 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 don't know what we did wrong or why you're so mad at us over it. 17. Our left nut comes out. We can take it out anytime we want. It doesn't even hurt. 18. I think I speak for most men when I say that every once in a while it's nice to be the little spoon. 19. No matter how many times we've seen them, we're always going to try and get another piece. Take mm. No bullshit. Next picture. Not a game. 
We need to be paying attention while paying attention, family. Keeping it real with K. Okay, so this is the kind of stuff that pisses me off because everybody, even in the comment section, are arguing over this. And what nobody has probably BlackRock and Vanguard. No, they, they don't want it. Black, BlackRock bought it long time ago. No, they didn't. So, this is a replica that's being sold in Hillsborough, California for $38 million. That's what this is. But, they're making it, you know, they're, they're adding all the little touches that make it look like uh, the White House or the address and everything, but it's in California. If you would have, uh, you know, scrolled down a bit on that Zillow app, you know, she would have seen that. It's not the fucking White House for sale. That's what I'm saying. You got to do your research. If you don't, you will fall for misinformation, disinformation, not that information, but disinformation is misinformation. <laughs> Just do your research. Diddy allegedly held freak-out parties with underage girls and sex workers and had hidden cameras in every room of his house. Producer Lil Rod claims in a bombshell lawsuit he was drugged and woke up naked in bed with Diddy and two sex workers and claims to have hours of video evidence documenting Diddy's serious illegal activity. Rod also alleged that Diddy possessed compromising footage of every person that attended, including Hollywood's biggest names and even royalty. He says the freak-out parties were career opportunities for young upcoming artists, and Diddy had music execs financially backing them. I'm about to go into this next era of my life, and um, I'm going to be doing a lot of um, positive things, you know, a lot of disruptive things, and everybody knows about everything. You know, I want a deeper connection with my Hopefully, he's going to be doing a lot of time, contemplation, reflection, and a cell. That's my hope. My fans. So I came up with this idea. I was going to get a special phone number, and I was going to be able to give it to my family, my fans, everybody that's down with the movements that I'm about. You know what I'm saying? The team love movement, you know, bad boy, you know. Black excellence, entrepreneurialism, getting money, um, vibrations, inspiration, and um, just special, unique content that I'm going to share on this, on this phone. He has no fucking attachment to anything he's saying. Listen to the different arenas, the different subject matters that he's throwing out there. And then watch him say it. There's no connection to it. You know, uh, black excellence, vibration, love. You know, he has no any content that I'm going to share on this, on this phone. And also, on top of that, I'm also going to be able to. Um, a lot of things I really don't want everybody, like everybody, to know about. Um, so, like on the grand. Everybody knows everything, huh, Diddy? Hey, what's up, y'all? Check this out. So I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, and I'm like, you know, I'm about to go into this next era of my life. And um, I'm gonna be doing a lot of um, positive things. You know, a lot of disruptive things. Um, a lot of things I really don't want everybody, like everybody to know about. Um, so like on the gram, everybody knows about everything. You know, I want a deeper connection with my fans. So I came up with this idea. I was going to get a special phone number and I was going to be able to give it to my family, my fans, everybody that's down with the movements that I'm about. You know what I'm saying? The team love movement, you know, bad boy, you know, black excellence, entrepreneurialism, getting money, um, vibrations, inspiration, and um, just special unique content that I'm going to share on this, on this phone. He has no fucking clue what's coming out of his mouth. He's got catchphrases coming out of his mouth, keywords, tags coming out of his mouth, but you can look at him when he speaks and tell that there's no attachment when he says these things. Like, if somebody that was all about frequency and vibration spoke to you, 
they would tell you, you know, we're talking about the Schumann resonance, or we're talking about 5.83, which is the healing resonance. We're talking about sophageo uh, frequencies, you know, of healing and helping each other. But he has, you could tell when somebody speaks about something, when when they have that love, that charisma, that that appetite for it. That's what they're all about. But his is just. That's all I get from him. He's, he needs to do time in a cell and have the same shit done to him that he's been having done to these children. That's the way I feel. I feel like he should be in a cell and he should be bent over with the cell open and everybody should be able to come in there and just have their turn with him because that's what he's doing. Who knows how many, how many poor children he has actually fucked up forever, you know? We'll never know. And also, on top of that, I'm also going to be able to be in communication with y'all. So when, you, and when I'm in your city, I'll be able to hit you directly. And also, I will be answering questions and talking to people and accepting resumes and, you know, giving information for parties. See, he's back on that shit. Accepting resumes for what? Who the fuck wants to work for you? What do you provide? You're not... Nobody wants to fucking work for you. Accept the resumes and then give accept the resumes was first and then giving information to parties was second. So you see how those two go hand in hand because that was the second thing that his brain thought of when he said accept the resumes and then you know giving information for parties. We had this freak off and see how down you are. The humiliation ritual and blah blah blah. Fuck this dude. Even like P. Diddy. I'm not going to speak bad about P. Diddy because um, he's still a black man. He, he, I mean, um, mistakes happen. And I can't say if it is or it's not a mistake. But things happen in life. And P. Diddy business is P. Diddy business. It's not my job or anyone else's job to go on the Internet and, and stump him and kick a man while he's down. Um, my take on it is it's not my business. Um, I don't think it's right at all. And I don't condone it. Even if that happened to my daughter, I would be hurt. But... Um, that's the choice that my daughter made. Tell me you've been to a P. Diddy party without telling me you've been to a P. Diddy party. That's what the fuck he tells me. And that, that sucks because I fucking love Mayweather. I absolutely love Mayweather as a boxer, as a personality. Mayweather is, aside from Tyson, Mayweather is my favorite. So that, that sucks. But see, he's... He wouldn't be talking like that if he didn't have some experience in P. Diddy's arena. If he didn't have some kind of, well, I would say multiple experiences in those arenas and see all that going on. Nobody gives a fuck if he's a black man. If you're a black man, he's a black man, and you're not trying to, now we're trying to fucking protect black on black crime? No. This is the time to get it the fuck out. Because this is true crime against everybody. It doesn't matter what color you are. But he's like, no, not, not another black man. That's not my place to speak on it. Shut the fuck up. That just shows that you've done what he's done. Probably not to the extent, but you went to a couple parties. You know, you indulge in the debauchery, you know. It shows. It sh it's all over. It's all over your fucking face. And that's sad. That's so horrible because I, I really liked him. He turned around like a straight up bitch. Like a Straight up bitch, like, ooh, who is that singing? And then just and got right up in his fucking face. I don't even know who the dude is singing, but oh, that's Meek Mill. Oh, Daddy was like, oh, he's rapping about me. <laughs> he's rapping about me, clapping them cheeks. <laughs> Daddy's like, I know my, I know my, uh. My whistle when I hear it, and he's singing it. <laughs> Ugh. 
Ugh. I haven't eaten dinner yet. Right now, we got another chance. We got another chance. We got another chance to be better. We got another chance to... We could do anything, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on one. Man, why is Diddy running around screaming he on one? He got another chance. And he thanking God. Man, what's going on? God gave us that. When he woke us up this morning, he gave us another chance. It's not over. He gave us another chance, man. man. Yo, don't bring God into your bullshit. Don't, don't do that. Just don't do that. Le leave God out of your bullshit. Because everybody that's truly about God knows that you're not. So just le leave him out of it. Don't. We don't want to go there. Man, we got another chance. Thank you, God, for today. I'm on one. I'm on one. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Is he talking about dicks? <laughs> what is he talking about? He's on what? That's the only thing I've seen he he's on something. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey yo, check this out. Woo, I just start that thing that you've been in limbo about how that conversation. You got another chance to forgive somebody. You have another chance to share. Um and the spirit just hit me and I'm like, man, you know something we all got right now? I guarantee you. He just made a deal with the feds because they said when they captured him, you know, he tried to run like hi <laughs> That's how st fucking stupid he is. He tried to run from local PD and FBI and hopped on a private jet like they wouldn't know where the fuck he's going. <laughs> they know exactly where you're going. And they're going to have people right there waiting when your plane lands. It doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the fucking planet. They're going to have people there waiting, which they did. Fucking come grab you. And he sang like a stool pigeon. He sang like a little Tweety Bird. He sang, 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 sang so much. He was like, I'm, I'll cooperate. I've got all the evidence. I record all this shit. I'll give you whoever you want. And and it's similar to the epilator thing, you know, the Epelstein, you know, th that whole thing. They were scared of him being forced to talk, you know, uh, give him some sodium, uh, sodium pentothal, make him tell the truth, some of that truth serum. Ooh, they were scared because they were like, oh, this guy has everything on everybody. And Diddy is like, I would say, a, not a complete junior level, but he was he was a lot more small time than Epilator, because Epilator was rocking with presidents and Trump, you know, in the early '90s, late '80s, you know. So I would, and and he just starts singing. Stool Pigeon Tweety Bird, just singing, singing, singing. I'll give you whatever you want, whatever, whoever you want, whatever you want. It's yours for the taking. And the feds are like, oh, we know it's ours for the fucking taking. We just raided your primary home, and we still got a few more to go. Yeah, we know it's ours for the taking, because we took it. It doesn't belong to you anymore. We're going to do a massive dump on all of your shit, because you're too stupid and you probably think because you said some shit on Snapchat or put it in the cloud that they can't get it? No. That's not how shit works. Everything is always there. Everything is there. So, yeah, he, he's he's singing because I guarantee you he didn't know that. Most people don't know that. It, it truly is about the Benjamin, as we see. Oh, yes, he, he's literally. It's really it's literally. About the Benjamin. Yeah. Well, now, when we come back, we're going to talk more with Puffy, and if you want to hang out, more than welcome to stick around, my brother. Oh, All right? We'll be right back with more right after this. See, this is what I don't like. This is misinformation. So, look look where Puff's hand is. Look, right here. His hand is just to his side. Tyson's looking at his hand right there. Tyson's just grabbing his hand because he's got a lot of jewelry on his hand and just making a comment. It's all about... You know, this and 
shows his hand. Diddy wasn't well, doing anything. Well, about the Benjamin, like we see. See? Oh, yeah, he's, he's, he's talking about chili. He's talking so, about the now, diamonds. Now, when we come back, we're going to talk more about... So, that's all that was. You got to you gotta pay attention to all that. Extradition of Sean Bones, also known as the Diddler. Uh, yeah, they're getting Diddy out of here right now. They found him in the subway. He was dressed up as a homeless man. Diddy was dressed up as a homeless man. They found him in the subway. And he's going to be extradited out of here. Back to LA. Very shortly. We're waiting. He was hiding in the subway dressed as a homeless person. He was yelling, take that, take that. And that's how they caught him. Yeah. Pretty crazy. That's what I heard. Somebody over here told me. But then they left. Somebody over here told me and they left. So I don't know if this information is true or not. So I hope you know that that that's Dan. He that's an April Fool's joke. So just don't believe that. But it was a good one. That was a funny pun. Don't believe it. On that note, I hope you enjoyed it. See you guys on the next one.